In 2024, the dollar menu at most food places has all but vanished. Let's make our own. Today we will make a pizza pot pie meal prep that cost $1 for each pizza, is packed with 41 grams of protein, and is less than 600 calories per pizza. I'll also show you how to turn this into a frozen pizza so you can take it out of the freezer, throw it into your oven, and have dinner on your plate in a matter of minutes. Let's get into it. A bowl and a spoon. That's all you need to make this dough. Get the bowl on a scale and add 405 grams all-purpose flour, 5 grams salt, and 3 grams of instant yeast. Whisk these ingredients together so they are evenly spread throughout the bowl and then add 250 grams of warm water. Using a spoon, mix these ingredients together until the dough is looking a bit shaggy like this. Then come in with a soaking wet hand and push the dough into the bowl. The goal here is simple. Get rid of all the dry ingredients in the bowl. I like to make a fist and push down into the dough and also pick it up and use it to scrape along the edges of the bowl. This should take a total of about one minute and looks like this once finished. Cover the bowl with a lid or cling wrap, go relax, and come back in 20 minutes. At this point, we wanna get our hands soaked again and pull on this dough four times once on each side. We will do that by lifting one side of the dough until it doesn't want to stretch anymore, then folding it onto itself. Give the bowl a quarter turn and repeat until the entire dough has been through a full stretch and fold cycle. As you can see, by the fourth pull, the dough won't stretch nearly as much. That is a great sign and shows the gluten developing before your eyes. Flip the dough over and use your wet hand to slide the dough into the bowl like this, which causes more friction, helping it develop even more gluten. Our dough should be looking similar to this and we will cover again for 20 more minutes while we knock out our homemade sauce. You can check out my three ingredient sauce recipe from my pan pizza meal prep after this video if you would like something a little bit quicker, but I wanted to make a sauce with even more flavor and it only takes about five extra minutes of work. Take an onion and chop about an inch from the stem and then cut the onion in half from root to stem. Peel back two layers from half the onion and grab a cheese grater. I want the flavor of the onion without bringing the chunkiness of diced onion to our sauce. Grating it will allow us to do that. Shout out to Brian Lagerstrom who taught me this trick in his OG deep dish recipe. I like to weigh a paper plate, set the scale back to zero, and grate the onion until I think I have 80 grams. In just 10 seconds, we are ready to make our sauce. My pot has been preheating on medium heat and it's time to add 10 grams olive oil, wait about 20 seconds, add our onion, and mix together. We want to give the onion about 2-3 to three minutes to saute and build some flavor. Then we'll mince 7 grams of garlic right into the pot. Oh shit. God damn it. Along with one gram of dried oregano. Give everything another mix, and once the garlic becomes fragrant, about 30 to 45 seconds later, let's pour in a can of red gold crushed tomatoes. Why red gold? They are super cheap and tasted the best out of all the cheap options I tried. Plus, cooking our sauce will condense and intensify the tomato flavor, making them taste even better. We'll finish off our sauce with five grams of salt and give everything a good mix. Once the sauce starts bubbling or boiling, turn the stovetop down to low, give the pot a mix and let it simmer for 15 to 20 minutes. It's been about 20 minutes since our dough has been stretched and it's puffed up a bit. It's ready for another stretch and fold. Repeat the same process, round the dough ball in the bowl, cover, and allow to sit for 20 more minutes. If you have a KitchenAid, you can mix all the dough ingredients on setting 2 for 4 minutes, followed by setting 4 for 8 minutes, and cover the bowl for 20 minutes. Now you can resume with us bowl and spooners. The sauce has just finished up and this is what we look like after 20 minutes of simmering. Let's take it off the heat and let it cool down. The dough has had its time to rest, it's puffed up a good amount, and it's time to divide it up into five pieces. There we go. Each dough ball is going to weigh roughly 130 grams. Once the dough is divided, grab five high-sided containers and lightly spray each of them with oil. We will take each dough ball, flatten it out like a pancake, fold each side of the dough into the middle, and flip it over. Finish it off by rolling each piece in a circular motion until a nice taut ball is formed. Let's get each one into a container, put a lid on them, date them, and refrigerate. The refrigeration process started days ago for cookbook owners because they received this recipe last week and are already eating it. If you want over 130 recipes from a cookbook that is literally growing in your pocket, use code E4CM for 10% off the book. We want to start this meal prep about 24 hours before it's time to eat our first pizza, which makes Sunday meal prep the perfect time to make the dough. However, you can leave one out right away and eat it in two hours and it'll still be scrumptious. Every additional day the dough is in the fridge just means more accumulating flavor. Our sauce is cooled off and I will throw half of it in one container and refrigerate. Then the other half will go in another container. The reason? We won't need all the sauce before the end of the week, so to make sure it doesn't go bad, we will freeze half of it and when we make 
make another pot pie meal prep, a week's worth of sauce is already made for us. Like this video. 24 hours later, the dough is ready, but needs about two hours to warm up and rise outside of the fridge, which is perfect because it's time to head to the gym. I always take Gorilla Mode pre-workout before I leave because by the time I get to the gym, my energy and focus is an 11 out of 10 and I always have a great workout. You can use code E4CM to pick some up for yourself and save 10% off your order. You may be wondering why I'm putting two dough balls on the counter when I'm only eating one tonight, but I'll show you later. After getting a massive of pump during back and by day, it is time to get the oven preheating to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we will grab a bowl. Ideally, the bowl will be about five and a half inches across and one and a half inches deep. However, I used one that was about six inches wide and three inches deep and still got great results. Just make sure they are ceramic. I tried to make one in a glass bowl because I thought it would be cool to be able to see the inside of the bowl and it only took one bake to crack. I'll lightly spray the inside of the bowl and put my part skin mozzarella cheese slices on the scale. Why did I get slices? Because it is easier to layer the toppings inside the bowl and it was actually a little bit cheaper than the blocks of cheese. So we will take 65 grams worth of slices and layer them along the bottom and sides of the bowl. Then I will take 40 grams of fat-free cheese that I pre-shredded a couple days ago and add it right on top of the part skim. We will finish with 65 grams of our homemade marinara and spread it around the bowl. A pot pie isn't a pot pie without some dough, so we will carefully remove the dough from the container, pinch an edge of the dough, and rotate it in a circle, allowing gravity to stretch out the dough for us. Once it is slightly bigger than the bowl, let's layer it on top and pat the edges of the dough. Now this finishing touch is going to take this pot pie to another level. Add three grams of butter to a small bowl and microwave until melted. Gently brush the butter across the entire dough, making sure not to forget the sides. And just leave a little bit extra for after cooking. I will repeat this process one more time since I am making two pot pies. I'll throw both on a tray and in the oven for 14 to 16 minutes while we enjoy this beautiful time lapse. And after 15 minutes, my pot pies are looking chef's kiss. Mwah. Perfect. Now it's time to add another massive layer of flavor. Using oven mitts, put a piece of aluminum foil over the pot pie with one hand and grab the bottom of the bowl with the other. Quickly flip the pot pie over and put back onto the table. Using a spoon, we will go around the pot pie to loosen it up. Then we will slide the spoon underneath the bowl and lift it out. If the cheese is all on one side, don't worry about it. Simply spread it out. Finish by brushing any leftover butter onto the crust and throwing it back into the oven with the broiler on high for one to two minutes or until the cheese and crust is brown to your preferences. Take them out of the oven and just witness this bubbly, ooey gooey perfection. After about five minutes, I'm going to throw one in the freezer and start eating the other one. Let's listen to that crust. God damn, it's beautiful. There's no butter in it, but it's like buttery flaky. Like there is butter in it. After an hour, I will put the freezer pot pie in a gallon bag and back into the freezer. Whether you want another pot pie tomorrow or you want to save one for weeks down the road, when you're hungry, just throw it in the oven for 12 to 16 minutes at 450 degrees and it will be as good as new. Yes, I know they aren't exactly $1, but they cost less than $8 for all five and you won't make me feel bad because these are helping people lose weight and get healthier one pizza at a time. You have one meal prep nailed down, but it would make life way easier if you had two meals prepped and ready at once. In this video here, I prepped delicious pulled pork sandwiches and mac and cheese for the entire week that is just 600 calories and 70 grams of protein. Until next time, deuces.